Welcome to chapter 2 of Point Set Topology course part 1. In this chapter, we discuss a number of topological properties which can be classified as or which can be called smallness properties. So, what are those? I have listed them here. Path connectivity, connectivity, compactness, Lindelof property, separability, first and second countability. It is better to leave the this phrase smallness properties undefined. It is not a part of mathematics, okay? It is about mathematics. So there is no need to define this uh, word rigorously. Let it stand as a, you know, whatever it implies in uh, the English, English words there. However, as a temporary stop gap, you can explain it as something Okay, roughly speaking, we just mean that the topology does not have too many open sets. But that is as vague as the, the words themselves. So I will try to make a definition, but don't uh, worry about that definition much. Just try to just to explain that word, that's all. So you can call a topological property a smallness property if whenever x tau satisfies p for all topologies tau prime on x such that if tau prime is smaller than tau and tau prime is contains a tau, x tau prime also satisfies p. So in that sense, with respect to this p, tau is quite small. After that, everything which is smaller than that will definitely satisfy. Bigger ones, you don't know. So that is the meaning of this, okay? So with this definition, you can keep track that many of these properties here do fit into this definition. I mean, they, they satisfy the property. I caution you, the last two are not of that nature. Nevertheless, they fit into the vague definition. You will see why. Okay. So that is why I am not very fussy about this definition. Okay. So the first module here is module 32 path connectivity, which is directly from layman's point of view or what may say elementary geometric concepts which are generalized into path connectivity. So first of all, let us make a rigorous definition of what we mean by path. Start with any topological space by a path, sometimes called a curve or sometimes called an R in X, etc. So I will be using the word path only quite often. We just mean a continuous map this gamma from a closed interval AB to X. The points gamma A and gamma B are called endpoints of gamma. To be more specific, you can call gamma A the initial point and gamma B the terminal point. We also say that gamma is a path joining gamma A, which is Z1, and gamma B, Z2. So all these terminologies, which are very, very much just, just English words, they have been given some definite meaning here, that's all. 
if such a path exists we say z1 and z2 can be joined in x is that clear you may think that a curve should be something it must have some positive length and so on with this definition there is no notion of length and so on because x is only a topological space before you want to talk about length etc you must have a metric there secondly even if you try to draw some picture of this okay picture means what then you have to assume x is r2 or something right the first thing is this is just a continuous map okay so in particular this may be a constant function if you look at the image it is just a single point so you may say that this is not a good definition of a path at all so before throwing it away like that you have to just wait why we have this such a general definition as a path a point map is also treated as a path is called a constant path that's all so let us hang on to that there is no need to throw it away okay though it is defying our common sense all right so let us carry on with uh, these definitions given two paths now paths are from some closed interval so there are two of them means gamma i from ai bi to x okay i equal to 1 and 2 suppose that gamma 1 of b1 is equal to gamma 2 of a2 in other words end point of gamma 1 is the beginning point initial point of gamma 2 terminal point of the first one is equal to the initial point of gamma 2 then we define the composite path okay this composite path is not a composition of of maps composition of functions so you have to pay attention to that so i am using this dot here gamma 1 dot gamma 2 from some interval a b which i am going to define into x everything is inside x by first taking a as starting point a1 here i i go all the way to b1 via gamma 1 okay so gamma 1 will be the map from a1 to b1 but now the the second point is some a2 right so i have to shift a2 to b1 in the interval wherever it is and then trace the rest of the lengths with gamma 2 so i take a equal to a1 b equal to b1 plus b2 minus a2 okay so b2 minus a2 brings a2 or t minus a2 whatever a2 to zero add b1 so that it starts at b1 that is the whole idea so this is the shifting of the interval a2 b2 okay to start at b1 after doing that a and a is and b are defined like this gamma t is the first part gamma 1 between a1 and b1 from b1 to b1 plus b2 minus 2 this length is precisely equal to b2 minus a2 it is t plus a2 minus the b1 when t equal to b1 what is this will be this will be a2 right t could be b1 here b1 here so this is gamma 2 of a2 which is equal to gamma 1 of b1 where t equal to b1 this is gamma 1 of b1 and this is gamma 2 of a2 they are equal therefore this is a well defined continuous function on a to b okay by the inverse path i am going to define what is the meaning of inverse path okay of a given path 
we just mean the path defined by a plus b minus t. We just want to reverse t to minus t so that you are just tracing the same path in the opposite direction. But since you are not working into 0, comma something, a comma b, you have to do this uh, this much of you know arithmetic here. A plus b minus t is the correct thing. So when t equal to b, okay, it is a. So that is the end point now. Gamma a becomes the end point. When t equal to a, it is gamma b, which is the which is the terminal point, which is starting point. So the initial point and the and the end point then and the terminal points are interchanged. So that is the the path, the inverse path of of this one. Traverse in the opposite direction. These definitions are borrowed from what happens to when you do integration on paths. Unfortunately, on an arbitrary paths, you can't do any integration. You have to have differentiable paths or piecewise differentiable paths. But we don't need that in topology. Uh, first of all, we don't know what is the meaning of differentiability of a function taking values in an arbitrary topological space. That will be too much. We, we are doing topology here. Even in a metric space, you won't know what to do with that. Okay, so we have come far away from the Euclidean of these topological spaces, wherein differentiability, etc., are also valid. But the idea is borrowed from there. Often by a curve, one means the image of gamma. So people always, you know, think of arc of a circle. Okay, ellipse. Or a parabola. See, in each of the cases, the whatever curve you mean is described in a different way. The circle or the arc of a circle, the entire circle is described by a quadratic equation. The parabola is a quadratic equation. We want to get rid of all that. And that forces us to have this parameterization. Okay. So, gamma, which is described in this curve now, is called parameterization, like e going to t going to e power i t, 2 power i t, whatever, is the description or parameterization of the circle. Okay. So, this is called a parameterization by those people who know what is a curve by different definition. Okay, for instance, the circle is equal to mod is equal to 1. This is another way of describing the unit circle. This can be thought of as a curve given by gamma theta to cos theta sin theta or equivalent to e power 2 pi i theta. You know, right? It's just e power i theta. Yeah. Okay. So, that is a parameterization of circle. However, we will consider two paths will be different if they are given by different functions. Okay. The only condition of the function that we put is that it must be continuous. So such things are called paths. Observe that since gamma 2 of b1 plus a2 minus b1 is gamma 2 of a2 gamma p1, it follows that the Composite is well defined, which I have already told you. Thus, we see that composite path is obtained by first traversing along gamma 1 and then along gamma 2. So, this is the geometric uh, uh, idea behind this definition. Moreover, image of this gamma is nothing but image of gamma 1, union image of gamma 2. They may overlap, they may whatever may have. Both of them may be constant at some point. Then, if, if that is the case, that point will be the same for both of them because one point they agree here. So, all those things are relevant. Very, very, very generic nature of the definition here. 
Also note that if gamma from a b to x is a path, and a less than a equal to a one less than equal to a two less than a three to b, suppose we take a division, cut the interval into two parts by taking a point between that, namely a two. Okay, then you can think of this gamma as gamma one dot gamma two, where Gamma i s are the restriction of the original gamma to the subinterval a one to a two and a two to a three. So this remark will be crucial practical importance for us. This can be done for any number. Only one division I put. You can do it finitely many cutoffs also. Finitely many divisions also. Okay. So suppose you have a map from alpha prime beta prime to a b, strictly increasing continuous function. So that itself is a path actually. We consider the continuous function. It's a path where inside this space a b, but it is strictly increasing, and I am assuming that alpha prime goes to a, beta prime goes to b. Okay, then we say that the curve gamma composite tau. See, gamma is from a b to x. Okay, tau is from alpha prime beta prime to a b, or just you can write alpha beta. There is no need to prime. The composite curve arises by a change of parameterization from gamma. This is the definition now. So earlier we had gamma as a parameterization. Now gamma composite tau is a parameterization, okay, from gamma, or that gamma composite tau is a reparameterization of gamma. What is the condition for reparameterization? This reparameterizing factor must be strictly increasing continuous function. In in particular. The direction with which you are tracing the curve is not changed. For example, the inverse part tau inverse is not reparameterization. Okay, or oh, sorry, gamma inverse which we have defined here. Okay, gamma two, gamma inverse we have defined. That is not a reparameterization. It is tracing it in the opposite direction. Okay, so here I what I am saying is this tau is from here to here, but tau inverse from here to here. Any strictly monotonically increasing function which is continuous is automatically inverse is also continuous. Okay, tau inverse is defined and is continuous. It follows that. Change of parameterization is an equivalence relation among the set of all paths. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why the equivalence classes are considered as as paths or curves. Okay, not exactly. You are not exactly interested in the equivalence relation. You can pick up one of the parameterizations which you which suits you. So this will bring you more to the geometry of the curve rather than the parameterization itself. Okay, but when you define such a thing, you must see why you are using the parameterization and what is the intrinsic property. Why you want to change when you take the Take this change of parameterization. All this you have to be worried about. It, okay. So here are examples. The mapping zeta t, which is cos two pi i t plus i sine two pi i t, which I was telling, you can write it as exponential t or whatever. Zero less than t less than equal to one is another parameterization of the unit circle, which was earlier theta going to cos theta plus i sine theta. But the interval was zero to two pi. Okay, so from here to here, you take multiplication by two pi and follow it. Then you get this one. 
So that is the whole idea. Given any two points, Z1 and Z2 belong into C, the mapping 1 minus T times Z1 plus T times Z2, this is called what? If T is restricted between uh, 0 and 1, it is the line segment from Z1 to Z2. Okay. So this will be denoted by Z1 to Z2. This, this uh, bracket Z1, comma Z2 will be called a line segment. This notation is borrowed from what we do at the real line. But it's not necessarily real line. It could be ZR2 also. Line segment may be like this, like this or something. Okay. So this is the notation for actually I am not only uh, denoting this one, I am using this one for the path that describes this arc. It must be from Z1 to Z2, T going to 1 minus T times Z1, the domain must be 0, 1, and so all that is there. So you are welcome to write down various reparameterization of the same path. Okay. So, for example, T going to Tz1 plus 1 minus Tz2, again 0, T less than equal to 1, will be the inverse because now when T equal to 0, it will be Z2, T equal to 1, it will be Z1. So this is the inverse path of that. Okay, t is replaced by one minus t. Note that such notation is somewhat unusual. Huh? Uh, uh, other than intervals in R. Okay, intervals in R are like that. This you have to be now uh, familiar with. Often we shall merely refer to either of these segments merely by the line segment between Z1 and Z2. This will make sense only if you are working inside a vector space. Okay, here I am talking about C. So why I have done just for C? Because these things are very, very useful in complex analysis when you are doing contour integration. That is my motivation for just quoting these things. That's all. After all, whatever topology you study, you would like to use them elsewhere also. One of the most intuitive and primitive and important topological property is path connectedness. Okay. Many times we just say no connectivity, just means that there is no road, there is no vehicle from here to there, we are all isolated and so on, we keep saying. So path there, what do you mean by, we have to have a path so that we can drive a vehicle, we can drive, take a bicycle or whatever, okay, there must be a path. We say a subset A of a topological space is path connected if any two points Z1, Z2 inside A can be joined in A. Remember what is the meaning of join? We can find a path within A with endpoints as Z1 and Z2. Okay, by very definition, if they can be joined, means it is symmetric. Okay, I don't care whether Z1 is first one, Z2 is, uh, is the terminal or the other way around. So it's a symmetric relation. Z1 can always be joined to Z2 by the constant path. So it is reflexive, right? So finally, if you can Z1 to Z2 and Z2 to Z3, all of them inside A, what happens? You can take the composition that we have defined. So that will take you from Z1 to Z3. Therefore, this, this if you think of this as a relation that Z1 can be joined to Z2, that is a equivalence relation. Right now I have just defined what is the meaning of path connectivity. That just means that there is one, only one equivalence class. The one can be, every point can be joined to another point. Okay. If we have one single point, so not inside A, to which 
every other point of A can be joined, then any two points of A can also be joined with each other. What you have to do? First start with Z1 to Z0 and then Z0 to Z2. So you take two of the paths like this and use the composition. Okay, one single point which you can join all that. Okay, it's like a so you get a union of x axis and y axis. Zero, zero comma zero can be joined to every path, every point in the union of x axis and y axis. Right? So that is the kind of situation I am in mind here. Okay. So now just all the time we have examples inside R2, R3 and so on. The same thing can be done in any vector space V. Okay. We call that a subset A of a vector space V is called a convex subset. Whenever U and V are there, the entire line segment must be there. Right? So that is the definition of convexity. Automatically, what does it mean? Any two points can be joined by the line segment itself. Therefore, in particular, every convex set is path connected. And more generally, what you can take is A is called a star-shaped subset if there exists a U belonging to A such that every V inside A, the line segment is inside A. So this is the case wherein you are taking union of say two lines which are intersecting at a point or several lines which are intersecting at a single point, all of them. So those things are star shape. Okay. They are not convex. Okay. Yet they are path connected because of this property. Because of this property that we have discussed here. <clears throat> if we delete a single point from R, it becomes disconnected. Well, we haven't proved what is the meaning of disconnected. We haven't even defined it. But we immediately understand what is this one. This is just this is just an English word. Okay. So right now, let it hang it like that. Then we will will define what is the meaning of disconnected then and we shall actually prove rigorously that this happens. Indeed, this is true of any interval also. If, if we delete a point, let's say point is deleted, okay, that point should not be the end point. If you, from close interval 0 and if you delete 1, it will be still connected, right? So here I am meaning path connected. Okay. Because every point in the interval, closed interval 0 to open interval 1, say, say A comma B, every any two point, you can join them. There is a line segment is already there. It is already convex. Right? So you can use the word instead of just disconnected, connected and so on path connected which you have defined, then everything is clear here. Alright. But if you delete one point from R, why it is not path connected? That is not obvious. You have to use something deeper about real numbers. Okay, we will come to that one soon. Try to prove that even if you delete a finite number of points from R in n greater than equal to it remains path connected. So this is immediate, this, this can be done immediately, okay. See if you remove one point from R, it gets disconnected. But if you remove finitely many points, any number of finitely many points from R2. It is still dis, it is still connected. You can join them by path. How do you do that? So I would like you to uh, leave it to you as a exercise. If it is uh, if it is too difficult or you haven't understood, you can contact us again. Okay.
okay similarly the unit sphere in rn n greater than equal to 2 n equal to 2 it is the circle n equal to 3 it is the two sphere and so on they are all path connected even though they are not star shape how do you show that circle is path connected you can into point there are two ways of you know you can have two different arcs you can use the restricted parameterization done but when you go to the two sphere how do you do that think about these things these are completely geometric and it's like an extension of your calculus study of calculus okay so at this stage we will take a break so we will continue uh, tomorrow next time thank you